Hello and welcome to another tutorial in my panoramic photography tutorial series. My name is Florian and I run the website pano.ie. Today's topic is all about shaving lenses. Um, here is a nice little panorama that I did in uh, the south of Australia at the Great Ocean Road. Um, you can see the 12 apostles in this one and um, you're you're slightly up in the air, about two and a half meters, I'd say. Now the problem with this uh, panorama, and that's why I'm showing it to you, is that while I was just taking that last shot down, um, the, the monopod that I had broke in half and my lens fell to the ground. And that's what I looked just after that event. Here's my old Sigma 10 millimeter fisheye lens. And as you can see, it's broken in two. So not very exciting. Um, a little bit of history about um, this lens, or just shaving in general. Um, I wrote a blog post in September 2011 about um, lens shavings. Um, I'll link it down in the uh, in the description for the video. Um, have a read that gives you all the details as to why um, you'd want to do that. Um, just as a very quick explanation, well, that might not end up being quick, but anyway, um, this is a full frame sensor here on the left hand side. Um, the crop sensor, the 1.5 times crop sensor is the red one in the middle and the Sigma 10 millimeter uh, lens, uh, 10 millimeter fisheye fish lens is designed for a crop sensor and that's why it's got these, this, um, the lens hood here, these, these petal shape um, things here. That's built in because the lens has only been designed for a crop sensor. Now when you want to use that on full frame, and there's a few benefits for that. That's uh, almost an ideal uh, lens for panoramic photography. Um, these these uh, blacked out areas are actually quite important and you want to get rid of these. So um, this is the before the shaving. So you've, you, you're losing the vertical down and vertical up. Uh, so the zenith and nadir area. And you're also losing on the sides. Um, and if I had that lens with the shading in, um, I would need about eight shots on my full frame just as well as on a, on a crop camera. I would need about eight shots with this lens. Now after the shaving that goes down to four. So it's quite a significant difference that this makes. And uh, the before and after you can see here. Now this has been done uh, professionally by a gentleman called Tobias Vollmer. He's from Germany. Have a look at his website. Um, it's that one up here. The link's also in the description. He actually offers a service where he will shave these lenses uh, for you. There's a bunch of lenses that this would apply to and um, he does a very, very, very good job. You, There's absolutely nothing you can um, contest on that one. Have a look at these guys here. That is just a perfect shave and um, he's very kind, uh, gentleman, very fast service and he promises to give you the money back if he screws it up. So why didn't I go for it this time? Well, that's just because as I now, uh, as I said, I now live in Australia and that's a fair bit off from Germany and I didn't really want to ship, um, you know, ship the lens all the way around the world, have it shaved and come back all the way and that would have just been too much money. So what I said, well, let's see if I can do it myself. I did a bit of reading and um, I might as well compile another list of links, uh, some of the blog posts that I read, but um, then I decided I might as well um, do a little tutorial about it as well. This is again the lens before the shaving. You can see um, there's quite a bit of area just wasted in the image um, by these lens hoods. So um, here's the lens a little bit close up. So what you want to do when you shave it, you basically cut off these things on the side. But the problem is you can see there's a very narrow gap here. That's the, the, the down view. There's a very narrow gap um, where the, the, the lens assembly in the middle moves in and out. And um, you don't want any of the, the stuff you cut off, any of the, I don't know what it's called in English anyway, the bits that fly off when you cut off these things. You don't want to have that go in there because that really ruins your lens. And um, because that, that barrel moves in and out. And if you get any stuff in between, your lens is pretty much a goner. So the most important thing then is really when you cut these things off is that you tape your lens, uh, that you close the, the front. I use some electrician's tape for that because they really don't leave any um, any 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 marks on the on glass, but the, it's quite thick and um, and a very reliable tape. Now it's actually quite tricky to to put the tape around the outside. As I said, you really want to watch for that edge here. So try to put your tape in where you overlap this area here. Um, there's about a millimeter, a half a millimeter on this side. So you really want to get your tape across that that gap here. And then, well, um, that is it. The next step is you really want to go ahead and, and cut it off. Um, how did I do that? Um, the easiest for that is that I'll show you a video. I'll just open it up here um, and I'll just walk you through it. So here's me, um, safety goggles on, very important. Um, and um, 
it's a, a Dremel cutting disc uh, suspended in a drill press. Um, that is just there to, yeah, obviously cut the lens off. You can see the masking tape, electrician's tape on there. I'll turn the noise down a little bit. You can see the, um, the masking, masking tape there on the lens. And I'm now work, work, working my way slowly uh, cutting through the, through the aluminium. So this is sped up now at eight times. Um, this is really important. You really, really, really want to go slow with this. So this is me checking for the first time did I go through. Well, need a bit more cutting there. And then um, have another check because I was, again, this is the first time I did this. Um, but yeah, eventually it cut through and I had my first um, bit of the lens hood done. I was quite, quite happy at that stage and my heart was uh, racing. Now, the only thing that I didn't do is really tape off the outside of the lens. Now, look at that, how dirty all that is. All that, that powder is pretty much that cutting disc um, reducing itself to bits. So I said, oops, probably better masking off the entire lens as well. So I did um, then just mask off the rest of the lens. You really want to be doing this from the start. Now, here's another little mishap. Um, nothing too bad to worry about and um, the disc just broke in half thankfully I've had a, quite a supply of those so I'll just replace the disc you can also see the, um, the the disc eating itself up quite quickly as I was so you can almost see it disappear there um, as it's cutting so I'll replace the disc there for another cut and just keep going slowly and then there's the next bit off yep so again quite happy Check that, blow everything away, and then go in for the next one. Needed a new disc once again. And we're almost done. And that's the last bit off there. Wonderful. So I was very happy at that stage because it didn't look too bad. Um, I hadn't damaged the, the glass. Now the only problem was that there actually was a bit of dust um, that made the way into the... Uh, into the um, into the side of the focusing mechanism and I think it went in here and that's because I didn't tape it off from the beginning so when you do this really make sure that you tape the entire lens off from the beginning and um, so that there's no gaps left for any dust to come in however I did give it a good blow um, also after removing all the the tape here um, just on my way home I did this at a friend's place I stopped at a petrol station and just used the uh, tire um, inflation hose there you can use to pump up your tires and just to blow that away because there's really clean air high pressure air coming out just to blow all the stuff away then I never operated the focusing mechanism because, because I suspected that there might have been some stuff in and I just tried to blow away as much as I could and also um, turn the lens basically upside down before I first turned the focusing me mechanism gave it a good shake good tap everywhere just to see if there's any more stuff coming out and then yeah it now works very well and um, it doesn't make any um, too bad noises there's a tiny bit of dust in there you can feel it but i think that'll just go away um over time again it doesn't seem to be too critical now there's still a bit of um a few sharp edges nothing um nothing too dangerous doesn't phase me too much um but it doesn't again doesn't fully compare um with the quality that you can get through um tobias's work it's just, I have no idea how he does it. He's very secretive about it. Um, but yeah, I can just recommend either do it yourself or go through through Tobias. Um, you can see it, it's really cut off cleanly. Or oh, here's the earlier one that I had. Um, just look at that. That's just beautifully done. Absolutely no, nothing left. And there was not a single piece of um, dust or dirt in the lens when I got it back. But anyway, I hope that really was a, was a bit of a, gave you a few tips and, and, and do's and don'ts. I was looking for resources before I did this. Um, I did find a few things, as I said, but maybe here's my here's my two cents. Um, yeah, you can see just a tiny bit of um, bit of it left there in the gap. And in terms of um, the photo, here's the after shot. Here, that's a little bit up there. That's that gap. But again, that doesn't phase me too much. Otherwise, um, the lens seems to be very nice and sharp, as you can see um, in the center, but also in the in the corners. That's just um, beautiful. Anyway, um, that's it already. I hope you, you learned something from this and you won't ruin your lens again. Uh, i just got to put a little disclaimer here. Whatever you do, it's not my fault, okay? If you ruin your lens, I didn't talk you into it. Um, so yeah, on that note, I'll uh, talk to you next time. Thanks.